Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Apostle Paul, with great confidence, speaking to the intellectual elite in Rome, said this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. And so we've been talking about the fact that Jesus can meet every basic need of your life. And what we're talking about and focusing on now is that Jesus can meet your need and my need to be present in the midst of the storms of life. That's our focus. And so we're looking at John chapter 6 and just a couple verses here, but a phenomenal story and miracle that Jesus is getting ready to perform. We haven't gotten to that part of it yet, but let's look back at that. So the backdrop of this passage in John chapter 6, beginning with verse 16, is that Jesus has fed 20,000 people. Uh, now we come to verse 16 in chapter 6. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not joined them. So the backdrop is the feeding of the 20,000. Now we see that at verse 18, a strong wind was blowing. And uh, the waters grew up. And so now we see, as we talked about last week, the bumpy boat ride. But now, now we get to the, to, to the part I want you to get to today. Verse 19. When they had rowed three, three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. Now, and then the scripture says that they were terrified. Well, let's look at that for a second. They saw Jesus walking on the water, and their response was they were scared to death. They were terrified. Walking on water? So you might say, really? Walked on water? Was he hydroplaning? I mean, what was going on here? Walking on the water. I love the story about four ministers that went fishing, three Presbyterians and one Baptist. And uh, he had never, the Baptist had never fished with these guys before. So the first Presbyterian they're out on the water, and he just gets out of the boat, walks across the water to go get some worms. He had forgotten his worms. The second Presbyterian forgot his hook, so he jumps out of the boat, walks across the water and to get his hooks. The third Presbyterian, uh, he broke his line, so he needed a new line, so he gets out of the boat, walks across the water, gets his new line. The Baptist is not going to be outdone, so he jumps out of the water, goes straight to the bottom. He gets up, spewing water out of his mouth. He plunges into the water again, goes right to the bottom. And one of the Presbyterians says to the other guys, he said, do you think we ought to tell him where the rocks are before he drowns himself? A little humor there. I hope you're laughing. So here's, here's, they said in verse 19, they said they thought when they saw Jesus walking on the water coming towards him, they thought it was a ghost. And you say, what's the big deal about that? Well, you know, sometimes when Jesus comes towards us, how do we respond when he comes towards us and wants to help us? You know, we need to beware, as I made some notes here, we need to beware that we don't stiff arm Jesus. Maybe the help that he brings us is not the kind of help we want. But you better beware of your pride, your fear, and maybe even ignorance. And so, what's the conclusion for this today? Well, first of all, Jesus showed up. He came to those disciples when they were in trouble. He showed up. What that says to me is he feels what they felt. He understood what they were going through. In the darkest hour for these disciples, Jesus showed up. They were in trouble. They were full of fear. They were surrounded by the darkness of adversity. Jesus showed up. Somebody said this, and I think it's very insightful. Very often, the Lord in his wisdom and his tough love will allow a person to sink until he is all the way under the surface and there is nothing showing but the bubbles. Well, how about you? How about you? Here's what I want you to remember today. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus will show up for you. You can count on that. You think about it. 